Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, I have been on a quest to try to find my signal through the noise. And as long as I can remember, I have tried to approach it in many different ways. The first way that I remember approaching it can be summed up in a Rumi quote. Let yourself be drawn by the stronger pull of that which you truly love. And we've heard this before. Follow your heart. Do what you love and you never work a day in your life. And these are all amazing, noble concepts. But I must confess, they didn't do anything for me. In fact, they kind of freaked me out. Because I, used to st I started thinking, well, has she had her epiphany yet? Has he had his moment of clarity? If I received my calling, was my phone off? And it really started to overwhelm me, this idea that I had to be on a particular road or that I had to truly do what I loved or I had to dream something when I was five years old and then fulfill the dream when I was 50. And it started to backfire. It wasn't a pleasant experience. So I had to try to reframe it. And it still is a work in progress. But this is what I've come up with so far. Reminding me of myself. So I believe that we have an instinctual way, an instinctual awareness when we know we are truly showing up to an authentic moment, when we are connecting with people in an authentic way versus phoning it in. I think we know. I think we know the difference. And that makes all the difference. Think about how many opportunities we have to be our authentic selves regardless of our road. It could be at the Kroger. It could be at the ball game. We get to choose our attitude, our behavior, and our actions in every interaction that we have. Now, to me, I could, I could dial into that. I could say to myself, OK, I can show up as me, or I can phone it in. And remember, it's a work in progress. Some days are better than others. Heck, so there's been a couple of weeks and some months where I've looked back and I said, I don't even know who that guy is. But to be able to be aware of the difference makes all the difference. It takes the external road out of it. Now, having said that, we have an external locus of validation and an internal one. So people ask me, they're like, why do you do this rock and roll thing anymore? I mean, the older you get, the amps get heavier. I have orthotics in my boots when I go on stage, or my feet will hurt. I have to take a nap on gig days, on gig nights. And it's quite simple, because when I'm at home and I walk into the kitchen to make coffee, nobody claps, <laughs> right? So we all have some desire to have an external locus of validation. But I believe the internal locus of validation is even more important. And again, we know. We know when, when we're interacting with someone, or with a loved one, or we're doing something that we truly love, it's its own reward. And we get these opportunities every day. Wherever I go, there I am. And wherever I am, I get to be me. How cool is that? And again, perfection is unattainable. Sometimes it's a complete disaster. But if I can be aware of the difference, I believe that is empowerment. And finally, small increments frequently versus large increments sporadically. So again, for me, it wasn't about an epiphany, because I didn't get one. So I like the idea of having small increments and small opportunities to be authentically me regardless of the road that I am on. Large, sporadic, epic events, I've never really done well with those. I still, I've ordered the lightning bolt from Amazon, but it hasn't come yet. But I don't think that's a huge tragedy because we are always given opportunities to be us. We get to choose our actions, our behaviors, and our attitudes in every, where, everywhere we go in every interaction that we have. So I'll leave it to you. How do you find your signal through the noise? Mr. Toastmaster.